All right, should we just do like and subscribe now? Three, two, one. Two. Like, and subscribe, like and subscribe. Like, like and subscribe. Like blah blah. blah. Yeah, okay, yeah. now, isn't it so f- like amazing how Oda went against the whole theme of One Piece by making Hiyori a racist zealot just like at the last <laughs> second, like that fucking heel turn? Suddenly we have a new main villain in her name. Uzuki <laughs> Hiyori. Uh, uh, n- no. <laughs> But, dude, like, uh, she said okay, they're born so, to so. burn. She wants Tama to burn. She wants That's to burn that true. child alive. She, That's uh, the yeah, point of the Yori, scene. If he already knew Tama was a Kurozumi, she'd fucking kill her. That's actually true. Also, if we follow that logic and Hiori hates you because of your bloodline, she's just waiting for Yamato to let his guard down so she can fucking murder. <laughs> I know. It's such an interesting plot point I would have made in the last five seconds of the arc. Like, how mm-hmm. how'd he, how'd he do it? Why'd we let him get away mm-hmm. with that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I get... So people think the counter-argument is just is just ooga booga pun but it's like it's not just a pun it's like a meaningful parallel because like it's obviously a parallel to odin scene everyone knows that yeah and odin said i was born to boil but hey guys what does that mean like what does born to boil mean uh boil means means that the steam rises and then like you know because odin was like underneath his vassals his steam would rise up and you know like his heat would go to them and they'd carry on his will Sure, that's. I guess that's some of it. Sure, yeah. I don't. I don't know how much oil steams up. <laughs> um, the other thing is, uh, well, what kind of smoke? So the smoke point. No, the other thing is, uh, the whole idea is Wano is like literally a basin, and Odin is trapped, and Odin is like this big, giant presence who's trapped within Wano, and he boils in it, and he boils alone because he's Odin, and he doesn't want his vassals to boil with him. So inside the super turbulent water, Wano, Odin alone dies. That's what he was destined to do, not in the Ooga Booga, haha, God hates you or whatever people think destiny is. I don't know. In the sense of, like, the conditions of Wano led to this outcome. Also because Odin's kind of a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, Orochi, let's follow that. All right, the Kurozumi. So, she was, talk- she was talking to Orochi and Kondra. Dude, it's but what's fucked up. They were persecuted for their bloodline. They were that's, genocided almost. Yeah, that's that's it's the same thing. And she wants because, to do it again. <laughs> no, 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 it's the same thing. Where because um, because Odin, the the environment of Wano, meant that Odin was born to boil. His life was kind of fucked because of Wano. Conjuro and Orochi are the same. They were born persecuted in Wano over fucking nothing, and that kind of environment especially when it's so exclusionary and isolationist, meant they were eventually going to burn with revenge and hatred, and then they died that way. That's what that scene means. It's cool. It's interesting. Yeah. And people are like, oh, but it's saying it was, like, good that they got persecuted. You people need yeah, to, this like, is like, this is like, 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 uh, like, uh, our, uh, yeah, no, our propaganda good, their propaganda bad part two, yeah. where it's like, yeah. you're, you're looking at this from the wrong angle entirely. Yeah. Like, 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 guys, use your reading comprehension. When we look at the Orochi flashback, the people who are depicted as persecuting the Kurozumi are protected as, like, evil, maniacal silhouettes. Yeah, they, they got the, like, the that wrong. weird, like, fanged what like tongues to out Orochi was bad <laughs> this series makes that clear you know it's kind of sad that like not many people realize that like orochi has ace parallels <laughs> oh no he's literally supposed to like it's very similar it's bad end ace yeah it, it, he literally kind of is bad end ace that's part of the point yeah and that's like really cool and interesting but no one cares because it's just oh i don't have reading comprehension i can't understand that in a rakugo performance so it was it, was it rakugo my stupid yeah it was rakugo. The wrong one. Rakugo. In a rakugo performance they use over the top flowery flowery hyperbolic language because that's how a rakugo performance goes <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, also, like, again, like, she said, like, like I, sure, maybe you could say, like, oh, but, like, she'd be cancelled if she said this in real life. Why didn't she, like, say Orochi specifically and do an Orochi mm-hmm. pun? Like, A, I don't know if you can make an Orochi pun that fits as well as, like, burning to, like, you know, boiling. And, you could uh, do, like, Orochi was born to be beheaded, but that sounds fucking stupid. And, well, and then, like, two, there was more than one Kurozumi in that scene. There was both yeah, was a, there was Kondra. both Orochi and Kanjo, and they were burning together. So if she said then, Kurozumi you know, also, to refer to both of them, interpretation of you know, 
in Japan, you can call someone by their last name and still be referring to them. Yeah. Oh, this is like what I Which remember. Like, yeah, it's, I remember. It's like it's like use your reading comprehension, guys. He already doesn't hate Yamato. He already doesn't hate Tama. He already doesn't hate anyone with a bad bloodline. She hates Orochi because he fucking sucks. You know, like, even like best guy who like we brought up before as having like bad takes. Like he has, like, I think he has like a nine minute snippet Where he of like just his rants about how people are dumb as bricks. Yeah, and like he says, like you people, like li- like literally, if you know like basic Japanese, you would understand that like yada <laughs> referring to people from a puff. When this was happening, someone made a compilation of, like, three Japanese tweets of people saying they didn't like the scene. Oh, well, I don't know what to say about that, then. It just, I guess there's dumb people all over the internet. What? No, don't be... Re- Puff, it's not like we... Dude, I can't believe there's earlier. Japanese One Piece haters. Can you believe that? Who are dumb? Yeah, because it's like, yeah, oh, wow, you found three people who are stupid? Okay. I can find dozens of English-speaking One Piece fans who just misread the English translation. Like, not bad translation. They just read the words. Yeah, no, like, like it's literally anecdotal evidence. And not yeah, like, like, oh, like, yeah. It's like, okay, you found another dumbass except from a different country. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's so, like, weird. Like, like even, like, you know, best guy, like, I'm gonna, like, best guy ever, like, and he doesn't follow this advice, but I remember he says, yeah. like, guys, like, I understand, like, there's, like, multiple ways you can interpret this, and if you choose to interpret in the worst way, then yeah, it's a bad scene, but why don't you just choose not to t- do that and just interpret it in the way, like, oh, it's a pun to match, like, Odin was born to boil, match it in that way, and, the, like, in the way that's obviously meant to be intended, and, like, he doesn't yeah. do that, as we might talk about no, later. No, he doesn't. No, no. And, uh, but, I like, still, like, it's a it's a good beat of advice. Like, you can interpret things, yeah. like, ten different ways or, most of uh, the time. I th- I Why don't you pick the one th- that has, uh, like, more going for it? I think another way is just, like, it's kind of the whole thing of, like, your analysis might be shit. Where it's like, okay, guys, what's a better analysis? Uh, Hiori is using a flowery language to condemn the man who uh, led to the death of her father uh persecuted her clan and basically tortured her for her whole life or the interpretation where oda got bored one day and decided to contradict to all the themes of his story which one of those do you think is a more reasonable reading if you say the latter you're lying <laughs> i can kind of get it because like i remember when the chapter first came out i think like maybe like tcb's translation was a bit different than like the viz one it was slightly different yeah and like I, I think it was a slight difference like i think in viz they said the kurozumi was born or something like that well i think they may i think they literally just or like the anime literally to not make people stupid as yuri was giving the scene we like right after it cut to like a happy odin and it's like she's doing this out of like vindication wait wait stop all right, we're back. Yeah. Was I even? I hope I was in the middle of a sentence. I uh, know. I uh, just uh, ooh booga. Uh, be smart. Nah. <laughs> Come on. Just, just be. If your ready, analysis just... has the story contradict itself fifteen different ways, your analysis is probably dog shit. Yeah, like, and I feel like it's weird to say this for like One Piece of all things, which is a child's uh, children's manga, but like mm-hmm. just be ready to challenge yourself if you want to get into conversations like this like as a reader like like, it's not even challenging yourself because it's like how did you pick such a stupid position uh, i guess it's just like just don't like stick with the first position you have when you first read the chapter maybe like like look into it see what other people have to say or the first time i read the tcb one i thought that was kind of weird but then i saw everyone losing their shit and i was like oh my god it's fine shut the fuck up (laughs) yeah all right all right uh next is uh did you know that one piece has like a bunch of plot holes oh my god all right i'm gonna tell them i'm gonna tell them to you okay vivi infiltrated baroque works like how did she do that when she's a famous princess wait 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 wait. are you telling me that vivi was able to infiltrate a company based around everyone being anonymous and no one knowing who anyone's name or face is. Are you telling me she was able to infiltrate that without her name or face being leaked? <laughs> no, dude. She actually failed because if you remember, uh, Whiskey she Peak is about how she was found out. 
<laughs> no, like that that's the thing about it just like all right a like no one's faces are revealed so like at first she's gonna get in and then b she was eventually caught so like why is this a plot hole when yeah, the no. plot literally acknowledges that like oh yeah we found you out miss uh miss o- wednesday uh yeah. you snuck in because you know we're all supposed to be anonymous yeah. no, but people always ask such dumb questions like how did crocodile not recognize her it's like bitch when did crocodile see her i know like that's the thing most people didn't even know crocodile were their boss they just heard mr zero and didn't even know he was a crocodile in alabasta one stupid thing i heard is like why didn't her partner recognize her it's like dude one piece isn't the modern day with the internet random fucks don't know what the princess of every fucking royal family looks like dude how many like uh like kings go to reverie now or countries like what over 50 at least yeah so like uh, you can have every royal family member like in your head when you're just some bumfuck who reads the newspaper sometimes like literally the only person we met in all of the baroque works saga before we got to alabasta who had a chance of recognizing vivi was waffle because he had literally met her before <laughs> so yeah, all that's right just, like, but like here's another one yeah but, right, he, but, right, but listen here's, a, here's another here's another one in alabasta this one will be true there's only supposed to be five flying Delph foods because Pell said there were only five. What the fuck, Pell? That How could is, you do that, Pell? That is, if we're being honest, just Oda not planning. Yeah, I know as it's far not as, head as we'd like, but it's not a plot hole for being hyper literal within the story. It's just Pell being really stupid. <laughs> like, like the thing is, like that doesn't affect the plot at all. Is the thing? No, it's not a plot hole. It's just like, oh, that's. It felt cool. like it felt like uh, it felt like Oda was like, all right, I'm gonna hype up five Del Fruits specifically, and maybe make that a unique ability in the setting, yeah. and then like and because being... it ended up being a thousand chapters long, he's like, all right, yeah. gonna gonna have to have more than five people who can fly. What I like is if it weren't for the fucking Tontata and all their bug fruits, you could like weasel your way into saying there were only five. No, 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 no. I would argue I would out the window. Yeah. You're gonna no, say I, it's only Shiki. I would Yes, I would I would argue that there's only one flying delphi and it's Shikis. I would argue a bird does not fly. They have wings that flap it's, and generate it, lift. It's not true. Goku Goku flies. Birds just flap their wings um, and disagree. create lift. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I think despite Shiki being called the flying pirate, I think he actually, I'd say what Pell does is flight because by definition of what flight is in the real world, that is flying. What Shiki does is fucking levitation. <laughs> All right, fine. Okay, so, okay, fine. So like all, every bird del food is labeled as one. Then we have uh, Shiki. Uh, <laughs> Shiki's, no Shiki's, food is, Shiki, Shiki's food is not canon as far as I'm aware. Uh, but he's called the flying pirate in the canon. Well, yeah, but that could just be because he jumps good or whatever. Yeah, that, sure. All right, that, that's, our, that's our head canon for now. Okay, so that's just one. Uh, Fujitor has gravity powers. That's different. That's uh, iffy. Um, Dolphamingo uh, just uses strings cheaters. to swing around no, no, from... No, we have, like, the long list of Paramecia cheaters. Who yeah, Dolphamingo, like, who uses strings Luffy, to... Fl- Dofi, yeah. where it's like, or Buffalo, who just spins really fast. <laughs> it's like, those are our cheaters. Yeah, our cheaters. They don't fly, no. And then, uh, or then we got the bug devil fruits. They're their own category, right? Uh, yeah. So the we're, birds, we're, the and bugs. the bugs. Kaido can't even fly. Kaido's a fucking cheater. Yeah, he no, Kaido us. climbs. That, Kaido. The, the dragons climb. Okay, so there's only two. I guess maybe, like, we can count, uh, uh, nika because like uh like you know like in gear five like it's weird it looks like he can straight up just like fly through the air oh, you and stuff. mean where he like does the the looney tunes running in the air thing yeah like that's like eh, like it's weird like even gear four can fly but like they may like oh he's using his elasticity to fly yeah. so he's just another cheater like i don't even understand what exactly that's supposed to mean it's just no, like no, he's no. pumping all his he's legs doing is just no all he's doing is just like it just looks like Skywalk. <laughs> no, yeah, no, he's he's basically doing like stronger Skywalk. He's doing Skywalk except it fucking hurts. <laughs> uh all right, and then we have uh our next pothole. Uh Chopper used a rumble ball against the Kraken even though he's only supposed to use it for a monster point now. I like this one because like it's it, this one is like one of the People don't bring it up, even though it's technically an actual one. It's funny, as Oda addressed it, where it was like, yeah, start of the time skip, Oda used a rumble ball to do something other than monster point. And then in an SBS, Oda's like, oops. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. just an error on his part, where he got used like, to drawing the rumble ball and forgot, like, oh yeah, uh, I was gonna have Chopper forgot, ditch that. I forgot I got rid of that, that's on me, oops. Yeah, 
And then, and the uh, weird thing is, I've seen people bring up another plot hole from that scene, which is that Luffy shouldn't have been able to go Gear Three because he was in a ball with not that much air. Which is like, uh, shut the fuck no, up. dude, Gear it was super bubble, super bubble. The long, the uh, laws of physics by like super bubble. any conceivable metric, and neither do the bubbles. It was hyper compressed air in that bubble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck it. It was actually hyper flammable. That's how he did uh, Red Hawk. <laughs> oh no, dude! He was taking all the like uh, all the air inside the water, like you know H two O, the oxygen inside the H two O, and just like absorbing it through the pores of his skin. And that means he was actually surrounded by hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Uh, what, what, all right, what's, okay. What's the the next, next this is the one that's an actual plot hole. Oh, it's the when one that I always bring yeah, up. Because Moria, yeah, Moria. Yeah, when says it. Yeah, when Moria summoned zombies at a. Uh, uh marine ford okay so during the, the daytime thing, unless marine ford in the manga because anime anime i don't give a shit in the manga where we don't see this guy unless that was the cloudiest goddamn day of the year moria should not have been able to make zombies because the guys he stole his shadows from should have immediately died and then the zombies would stop working <laughs> yeah that's weird like they would have immediately combusted in the sun but that didn't happen that's a plot hole does it matter no because it's a five second scene and then jimei one taps him but that is like one of the only real plot holes that i know yeah and the next one is when we talked about before is like the cp0 dress rosa thing where it's just like also yeah also not a plot hole yeah i would say it's a contrivance and not a plot hole oh, no, uh, all stories are contrived yeah i know up. yeah i know it's just a contrivance you don't accept that i do <laughs> Eh, no, I can accept it. It's just like, but like, it's I pushing the it limit. It's easier. pushing the <laughs> limit. <laughs> uh, uh, is there more plot holes? These are the ones I've written down. Those are the. What else? I don't think there's any others worth talking about. Yeah, I know. Like some oh, of them oh, were just like guys, stupid. For the record, fake out that's not plot holes. Don't. Eat, that's not what that word means. Shut the fuck up. Please. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So, s this one would actually be a plot hole if it's true. Uh. Mm -hmm. People think that uh Wang Z was at Thriller Bark. And, like, okay. he's, like, they specifically point out, the, like, that giant armored guy with the beard and say that's Wang yeah, Z. Yeah. Okay, hey, hey, guys. I get that a lot of you say that Thriller Bark is borderline filler, even though it has a warlord, Kuma, a new crew member, and led to a bounty increase. But let's pretend none of that happened, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, sure, sure, guys. It's light filler, therefore your memory on it is kind of bad. Oh, also, Zoro got a new sword for the love of God. Ryuma, for the love of God. Anyway, let's pretend that it was a, uh, a light filler arc so you guys kind of forgot how it works. Here are the very simple mechanics to Moria's zombies. He steals a living person's shadow and shoves yeah. it in a corpse. That shadow animates the corpse. There are two ways uh, to fuck this up. And then One. the corpse ran back to Beehive and no, no, fought no, Blackbeard. <laughs> how it works. No, here's the thing. If, uh, here are the problems. Some of the weaknesses are if the host of the shadow who can now no longer go in the sun that was brooks thing dies the shadow disappears and the corpse stops working two corpses don't have shadows at all like moria can't pick up like moria can't go to whitebeard's grave and steal his corpse he'd had to st steal his shadow he'd have to steal his corpse so guys how also rule it, moria has to revoke all shadows uh like that's how that's how his power disables you can't knock him out he has to revoke it which he did at the end of thriller bark yeah. So let's say that golden fucker was Wang Ji, and Moria freed him when he did that. The only way he could then be at Beehive is if Moria put a new shadow back in him, Wang Ji got all of his memories and sentience back, and then fucking hightailed it to Beehive, immediately took over, and then lost to Blackbeard like a month later. Yeah, I know. It's just like, it's it's weird. It's like, it's like theorists, like with Sanji Lunarian, where they just like run with an idea because it's cool and then like don't think about how it contradicts lore, even though that should be their one job is to yeah. like work with where the it's lore. Like, it's like, guys, the whole thing of like, dude, or people like, dude, Moria had so many rocks pirates. He had one, maybe two. <laughs> No, like I like I think like the him. like if you want to look at like the like I think like that silver axe guy like people Insane said oh this tiny guy axe. might be him like the if you want to say if you want to say these are rocks pirates sure but like you can't pick Wang Z specifically because no, he was a PI. No, you can't lie and say Moria loaded his crew with rocks pirates when he only has one cannon one, and, and then, then two the maybes. One, no, one maybe because Wang Z is literally impossible. So he has one definitely and one maybe, and that's. 
No, I think it's two. I think it's two maybes because like the uh, it's like the bearded guy and the silver axe guy. Like those no, no, are the because t- the bearded guy they think is Wang Ji, which is objective. No, like possible. listen, it does It can't be Wang Ji, but it could just be a random background rock star. Because I think that I think that guy. I think yeah, because because I do think I see right the claw fucker. Yeah, people think that the claw fucker in the background of rocks was on Morris. Right? Okay, two maybes, not the beard guy, because there's no one that could be that we know. Well, wasn't Actually, there also like a like a guy in the corner of the page that had a beard? I thought that was like. I don't think so. Eh, who knows? Whatever. Okay, it's so not like it matters. Just, These characters literally don't movies. matter, and I don't care yeah. about them. <laughs> no, where it's just like don't pretend it's canon because your two best examples are Captain John, which is true, and Wang Ji, who is literally not possible. Like it's ob- it's objectively impossible, and there are very few theories where you can apply that. Hmm. All right, uh, I'm just going to stop for a sec just to check the recording. All right, now you made a blog about this one a long, long while back. The Long Ring Conspiracy. Okay, so th- that was literally the title of the blog. So th- this is going to be probably one of our more... Uh, Tinfoil hat. Takes. <laughs> one of our more unhinged takes. Like, probably one of our only. Here's my fucking conspiracy theory. So, uh, in the manga, Long Ring, Long Ran... We immediately land from Skypea. Boom, we're there. Right after the Foxy fight, boom, Kuzan is outside the old fuck's house. And yeah. then Kuzan is what solves the plot because he's like, I can't reach my family. And Kuzan's like, I'll fucking freeze a path for you. And he's like, thank you, Kuzan. Uh, in the anime, wh- they don't land at Long Ring. They land in, was it G5 or G8? G8. G8. G5 is smokers then. They land in G8, not Long Ring. And then Smoker for, not Smoker, Kuzan, for some unexplainable reason, isn't at the old guy's house. They moved him to some other island that we go yeah, to. Yeah, like right there's this, like there's this. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, there's and, like this filler episode where they go to an island. There's just these like stranded people like, yeah, oh, and, finally people. And then like Aokiji yeah, shows, they're like, oh, I'll and, get you back to home. Here's, here's my conspiracy, because what did this lead to? This led to Foxy being isolated from the two things that make his arc obviously can this leads to in the anime long ring being able to appear as a filler arc and then what happened to foxy after this he was in fuck tons of filler arc and the only time we've ever seen post time skip foxy was in a really good special yeah (laughs) so my conspiracy is that toei intentionally separated foxy from the canon in the minds of the viewers so that they could make him like a pseudo filler character that is my fucking conspiracy they want thing. to steal him from oda <laughs> one thing if it was just g8 but the random fucking filler arc makes no fucking sense if they wanted they more it doesn't. filler, they could have just made long ring longer because they are oh that's the other thing they made long ring like half filler in the anime which is just funny mm. they could have just done more of that if they needed more episodes but they didn't they made this random really suspicious filler episode and it gets me mad <laughs> and also like it's it's kind of like sucks that aokiji's not on long ring because like his, the thing he brings up with the robin like directly ties into long ring oh yeah oh uh yeah we, we've talked about long rings themes yeah on one of these like uh it's about how the crew <laughs> won't can't be torn apart by outside forces yeah, but then aokiji t- shows him says it. that woman we've will tear you out from the inside out but yeah yeah. yeah anyway so just very very tinfoil hatty but i it's, it's i like to think i'm right <laughs> yeah we like it to think we're right that i that i i fight for my boy foxy <laughs> all right uh you want to talk about the stakes oh i boy. like the stakes oh, oh my god the stakes are, were so low during wano because i didn't think anyone was going to die also my favorite arc is any's lobby <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up Here's the, you can't do both of those things because Wano has by far the most amount of canon character deaths, whereas Eni's Lobby literally had one of the biggest death fakeouts in the entire series, where we thought literally all of our allies were dead, and then it was revealed they were hanging off the edge of a cliff. Like the thing is, like I don't really care. I, I'm not reading One Piece for stakes, but like I kind of get like what people are saying when they get like, oh, I just want to feel like uh, some tension as I read page to page. I'm like, yeah, there's plenty of ways you can get that without like literally expecting and needing someone to die. Yeah, like no, just like just, just like a just like a well illustrated panel layout can is supposed to do that. Like or right. Like, or like there's other stakes. Like for example, one big thing is a lot of questions. For example, one big thing was. How exactly are we going to beat Kaido? Because here's the thing. The stakes were never, will we beat Kaido? Obviously, we fucking will. The stakes were, how? And that was really interesting. Because, like, going into Wano, everyone thought, oh, maybe it'll be, like, literally an 11v1 with every supernova, right? 
Yeah, that, that was a popular got, theory. There was all those edits. A, and then we finally got Roof Piece, and it was like, oh, it's like a couple Supernova versus Kaido and Big Mom. And then Big Mom fucked off, and it's like, oh. And then Kid, Law, and Zoro fucked off, and it's like, oh, Luffy's 1v1-ing. Okay. <laughs> and then and then it's not just that. It's not like, oh, now we know the matchup. Fight over. Luffy, Law, the still of how we're going to beat Kaido still existed because advanced uh, armament couldn't do shit to Kaido. Luffy needed to lose like three times, unlock a new form of hockey, awaken his devil fruit, and make his biggest, strongest attack ever. So the question of how was always prevalent. Yeah, like, I, I do kind of get when people say they don't like how it was at the tail end, because, like, I feel like, all right, uh, but, but like, obviously Raid Fail is fucking stupid. Oh, yeah, but, uh, think Raid but, like, but if you, but if you, but if, you but if your critique is, like, something like, I wish Luffy was down for, like, a few more chapters in between That's his, fine. like, awakening, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, no, I, I think, like, yeah. You, like, like, you wanted more, uh, everyone is depressed that Luffy might be down shit sure that's fine that's yeah fine like like like, like even like dress rose i'd say is a pretty like a cool example where it's oh, like oh, even oh. Even to carry his ass around yeah like or like when gear four happened uh, it's like oh he can totally beat dofi but then like he 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 didn't finish the job and he's like oh fuck right. he needs to recover and dofi's like rampaging through town thing, looking for well, straw the hat thing about stakes is like if you people actually like these characters like you pretend you do a big thing with stakes is just like the character arcs and how the characters grow like, yeah. the queen fight with Sanji, for me, had a lot of stakes for Sanji, because it, I was so curious where his character arc was going to go, with the whole thing of, oh my god, did Sanji fucking hit a woman? And oh my god, is Sanji losing his fucking emotions? That's fucking wild. Where the fuck is that going? And yeah. some of it I expected. Like, I expected him to reject the raid suit, but other things actually caught me off guard. Like, that queen gaslit Sanji. That actually surprised the shit out of me. <laughs> And it's like, shut up. And also the whole thing of like, Ugh, how am I supposed to take this seriously if I know the main characters are going to win? It's like, you guys like Annie's Lobby, don't you? No, you guys... yeah, that's, the, that's the thing that really gets me is like, all right, if that's like your criteria for a good story, the then you can't like really any reread. You can never like a good reread oh, yeah, then. No, rereads are inherently garbage. You know what's going to happen. And also, by the metric of uh, it only works if the main characters aren't guaranteed to win, your only good arcs should be uh, like, ironically, I can think of three arcs that fit. One is marine four because it was a failure two is sab odies it was a failure and three long ring long ring <laughs> yeah the boy kind of, long ring because the stakes are kind of low it's just a game like even if they did steal chopper they can just rematch foxy <laughs> yeah but then suddenly it skyrockets once out kiji shows it was like oh fuck he beat luffy <laughs> yeah no it's like you know it's like you, you people don't actually use stakes as a real thing that they care about from arc to arc they only use it to bitch about things they don't like that is so true no one is consistent with that criticism no. and if they are that means they fucking hate any's lobby and i don't take you seriously <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess like like if you just want to say like oh i just like feel more tension as i read any's lobby than do wano it's just like yeah okay cool that's fine Good that's for you. yeah but like the way people that's talk about that's not <laughs> yeah i know it's like that's not like that's not the way people talk about it because no one dies in any lobby yeah whereas oh, so many people die in Wano. i forgot hawkins is dead yeah like, i forgot to list him the last time i was listing wano deaths because i was going really fast yeah hawkins died yeah all right this next one is just like about like a, a definition that we kind of don't like it's uh mm -hmm. stop calling arcs or microcosms or like stop okay, calling is, characters this, microcosms this or such whatever an analysis thing where it's like where it's like nl is a microcosm of emu dress rose is a microcosm of the one piece story shut the fuck like up, listen every like... single arc is a microcosm of the one piece story that's what a story no, arc yeah, kind of yeah, is cool. one piece is really well written guys so arcs build off of each other so like themes of like authoritarianism and like people in powerful positions giving themselves titles they're not worthy of those are always prevalent in every arc and they're built upon like do you know what's the first example of a character giving themselves a title they're not wor worthy of literally Higuma, no first higuma oh, because okay. he's like i'm the almighty mountain bandit i'm such a badass man killer and then the second is alvita who like we even saw in the most recent chapter is like hey kobe who's stronger me or kuma <laughs> <laughs> 
And then we have Captain Morgan, who, because he's a cat, I remember Puff, I, one of my friends, I got uh, I got her to read a bit of One Piece, and she got to Morgan, and she's like, this guy's so funny. He's a captain. He's so low-ranking. Why does he think he's such, such tough shit? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, and then we get built, we build upon that in big ways, and it's like, why is Anel the only one that you decide is a true microcosm? Is it because the word God got brought up? Is that it? Dude, what about Wapul, our first corrupt king, our, our <laughs> ruler, who, like, doesn't what? care about the people? people and he and even went and he even is affiliated with the world government it's not a and, fun and, coincidence and, and, guys and dude skinny wapple if you shaded him out would probably look like eam silhouette <laughs> just because like big crown and skinny guy and yeah, a coat literally literally but it's like and then the thing about arc microcosms is it's the same thing with character things a lot of times this ends up with like worse analysis and understanding of arcs like currently Anel and uh, Skypea are just known as oh they're the microcosm foreshadowing arcs, which is like or like okay. Dressrosa is just the microcosm of the One Piece world arc, which is terrible ways to talk mm -hmm. about them because Skypea has a whole thing with dress with Jaya, I mean, where it's like this cool exploration of uh, faith versus skepticism and how they interact, and it's all very interesting and cool, and it ties into huge themes like dreams, and then Dressrosa has like a lot of cool themes like i'd say dress rose's biggest thing is actually hatred is a theme hatred and love yeah and, like dofi's whole thing is he will control anyone with hatred because he knows that because in dofi's mind the number one strongest emotion in people is hatred because he's dofi so his yeah. mind is i can control anyone through their hatred and that's what he does he controls law he controls he thinks he can dude i'm actually making a video about better. this right now and ass i'm excited etc yeah. etc and then we see like the love theme a lot with like senior pink or uh rebecca and kairos dude like isn't that. it so cool that the one person uh l l uh, that luffy like this is okay i'm getting off topic here just like about like how uh b because it's really cool how like uh you know luffy has like his j form of joy gear five and like yeah. so, like why wasn't why didn't that beat dofi like if dofi is good at controlling anger why is it gear four the the one with the big angry face that kind of emphasizes his anger and it's because like oh there's actually a source of anger Delphimigo can't control like righteous anger like yeah. when you when you're taking on the anger of others and just like saying i think your whole kingdom is disgusting i have no one reason to hate you i just hate everything you're doing inherently like in my gut then just like yeah i think that's kind of cool yeah. and whereas like if you're a fucking morchad you're like what are you talking about dofi is just diet eam and his officers are just the goro say what do you t what do you mean yeah i know it's kind of like, like the whole dude, parallels thing we did last time eam. No, it's similar. Where it's like, guys. Like to be fair, like, there like are I think similarities, but please shut the fuck up. These arcs have so much going for them. Puffer just ranted about a bunch of random shit about how cool they are, because arcs are so interesting, and you guys are literally limiting your ability to analyze and understand the story by going by such rigid rigid rules and it's awful like i'd say like the three like big like in dressrosa humanity is defined by like three big emotions uh love anger and uh pain and right. doflam and both like like pretty much most characters like uh the riku family uh um and dofi all have like very strong feelings about all three of these things like kiros like is not able to feel pain when he becomes a toy and he's like right. super angry at doflamingo and uh, he feels love for his family. Do Flamingo wants to control all anger. He hates pain and like hates it when people betray him and try and cause him right. pain. Oh, and you know what's infuriating? Yeah, Moras what? used to have good Dressrosa takes. But now that everything's a fucking microcosm because that's like his his style that's all he ever fucking talks about and because people think more just like yeah like the, like i don't think YouTuber, i don't think everyone just parrots him i don't think emu is going to have that exact thing about like these three big emotions that that'll be like one of the big core sticks of his characters ah he wants to control all anger no. he hates like obviously no one likes pain and he'll probably be right. very similar to Doflamingo because like they're both celestial right. dragons but like i don't th that'll probably just be a small aspect of his character along with like other or things like, if it's um, even there to begin with right Right. Or, like, the way... Obviously, the concept of what god means is going to be explored because cause Luffy's fruit is literally called a god fruit by the Gorosei. And the social dragons call themselves god. But my assumption, because One Piece is an interesting story that builds on its themes, is the way being god is going to matter to Eam and Luffy is going to be radically different from Anel's, like, 
fear is god <laughs> yeah like that was a cool thing about nels that like you know he has the lightning food and lightning is typically used as like a in like a bunch of religions as like divine wrath or like the because right. like when it's it, you can't understand lightning or at least when you're like caveman green you can't understand lightning it's just these scary shit that falls from the sky it's something you can't understand it's unknown and it's obviously very dangerous and powerful so like you like it, 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 there is that like association across like all these different religions with lightning and then like you know nl is lightning and he believes fear is the kami so like he's the most fearful element in nature and that is the, the yeah that's that's the whole thing and it's cool yeah it's like a and then he meets something that he can't understand which is fucking rubber because no, sky so, p is goofy it's so cool and then yeah and it's like oh they also yeah it's it's cool i like it a lot uh, so yeah, basically, um, microcosms aren't like bad to talk about, but a lot of people end up limiting their perspective and ability to think a lot. Like, like when I hear someone say this arc is a microcosm, like a certain like fucking TikTok YouTuber that we watched. Um, yeah. To me, it sounds like uh, an old Nux Taku. This is the philosophy of Meliodas and how he's depressed. Like you're not saying anything interesting no you're barely saying anything at all you're just using it as an excuse to read that's the thing about microcosm 2 it's such a good excuse to recap and call it analysis uh yeah because like i, I can't understand if you said like oh like this subplot can be a microcosm of the whole arc if you just want to say like you know the whole arc will have this common oh, theme uh, running i'd through say it. a good example of a video about microcosms is hot boy spicy's video on shukaku's flashback <laughs> that is a great example of someone because that is actually like a half chapter flashback. Yeah, no, like it kind of reminds me of like uh like like that whole like like Shikaku thing about how like trying to summarize your whole like uh main theme and like you know in a different way in this other way kind of reminds you of like really revol cool. it really reminds you of Revolutionary Girl Utena. Oh my fucking god. Okay, cuz the thing is that at the commercial breaks like before them like in the middle of each episode yeah, yeah, I know. there'd be the shadow puppet plays and it'll just like this is this episode's yeah, dude, theme just portrayed just in a like, different way. Like it would literally dude, be a microcosm of the episode. Pup, it's just like the Monokuma story times in Danganronpa. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so half of those actually didn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, I know they don't. Some of these are just like Pino. funny shit. Pino. Okay, so what's next? Uh, next is uh, power creep makes no sense. What how did Co to... How did Kobe <laughs> punch a mountain away? How did oh, yeah. How did Crocodile uh, fight everyone? And how did Luffy get multiple power ups in a single arc? Um, if you're bitching about power creep for the sake of it, you're kind of just, like, a whiner. Like, the thing is, like, I understand Crocodile because, like, that's actually the most no, radical dude, he, increase in strength. No, he got yapped in prison. Yeah, but the thing okay. is, the implication was, like, like because he says, like, did prison make you soft and how he was just, like, had, was just seemed to be laying around. It doesn't no, seem like he, he was training. Yapped. No, no, whenever, whenever Jinbei wasn't looking, he was doing, like, sit-ups. Yeah, but it's just that it's funny because, like... Crocodile arguably got stronger in between Alabasta and Marineford than Luffy oh. did over the whole time skip. <laughs> oh, it, that is a very funny way to put it. Um, where it's like, yeah, some I think it's kind of just the shonen thing of like all all battle manga are gonna have some level of inconsistent power creep. I don't give a shit. You can name whatever fucking battle manga you want. There's at least one. What about Vagabond? Vagabond has inconsistent power creep. Shut the fuck up. They all do. No, the thing <laughs> um, is, like, the thing is, in One Piece, the only one I could feel is Blaine is Crocodile, and I feel like yeah. that is just because, like, the story wasn't planned to be a right. thousand but chapters that's long. That's kind of the thing of you just ha Okay, that definitely is part of why. Yeah, I feel like... You kind of just have to accept that, uh... All stories are going to have some level of power creep, and some of it might feel a little weird to you. But then also, a lot of the shit people bitch about is just dumb. Like, how did Luffy get so much stronger? He either did a training arc or got a power up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like Kobe is like, I don't know why people are mad at that one, just because, like, like, I get, like, it looks cool that Kobe blew it away to Mountain, but, like, Frankie could have done that. No, Come, no, on, like, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. We're literal about that feat. Like, guys, think really hard about One Piece and realize, like, oh, that's just, like, a pretty good feat yeah like it just looks badass it's also like guys it kind of reminds me of like when people saw galaxy fist and said dude is this the strongest attack in the whole series and like okay by what by what metric are we going are we going by like the aoe because if that's the case zoro cutting peak is probably more impressive oh, it's, it's if we're going but if we're going by like raw power i i think like uh 
like e- even like something like Ace's uh Ente attack would be like a lot more impressive. Right. Like it, it also co- probably covered more ground. Right. Uh, like out like it, it didn't knock out anyone particularly powerful because it was all just a bunch of fodder there. So like mm-hmm. like I I feel like the actual like candidate would probably be Divine Departure. <laughs> It's like one thing that people don't talk about as like or the Bodrick. Uh, one thing people don't talk about as like interesting power creep is uh, the way One Piece actually does it really cool. Where Luffy out, outside of like Smoker who hard countered him, Luffy was like the way One Piece did power creep is until Crocodile, no one was on Luffy's level, like not even no close except yeah. for Laboon. I think this is actually where people like like didn't like you know. Uh, of Wano specifically is just because like One Piece was going so slow with it for the longest time, mm-hmm. and then like in Wano, like Luffy got like more power ups and then he did like multiple ones, like I mean, small ones fair, and big uh, ones. I mean, to be fair, he also got two new Gear Four forms in just uh, in Whole Cake Island. Yeah, like I think people like also were and, complaining at Whole Cake because like obviously no, they were bitching about that too. Yeah, like, but like so what? But, but like I kind of get so where it's coming just because it's very different from how the story's been operating before. But like at yeah, the same no, time, like in and of itself, it's not a bad how thing. Fucking long to get his first power up? Like not not ha ha water Luffy. Like literally, how long did Gear Two take? Three hundred and and eighty something eight, chapters, I think. Eighty seven. Oh yeah. my fucking god! Like yeah, that's crazy. And then, like, and he didn't like, get another one until, like, the time skip. And then he didn't get another one until... Ge- well, I, I say Gear 4, but he had that since the time skip, so even that doesn't count. But he didn't count. use it until... Like, like, like yeah. yeah. Like, that's why, Luffy. that's why like, I didn't get all the complaining during uh, Whole Cake Island. Because, like, dude, this is Luffy's first actual power-up in, like, 300 chapters. Right, like, <laughs> use it. No, and then, like, like, I think... And I think it's cool that One Piece does that, where, like, we have this super slow burn in like the shitty parts of the sea but then as one piece makes quite clear both through dialogue and through observation you grow a lot when you fight strong guys don't even look like oh look at the fucking hockey blooming look at luffy versus crocodile rounds one through three yeah or like it uh, doesn't just get better at countering him luffy gets better at fighting yeah and it's like that's how it, so like when luffy's in the little bitch sea he doesn't get that much stronger but he does but even when he does it's radical like gear two is was an insane fucking jump in strength <laughs> it was and 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 now that luffy's in the new world fighting literal emperors very dangerous place and like first commanders he is being forced to develop at an even more rapid rate <laughs> because that's luffy's thing he keeps bouncing back and eventually he's gonna have to bounce back with fucking uh nika boy mode <laughs> yeah i guess like this is pretty uh, related as uh aspel power-ups and how people don't like them I think um, it's fine. They, they don't, except for when they do. Like, I remember people were really split on if Ashura was good or bullshit. The answer the is, is bullshit I... and good. <laughs> I know, because, like, all right, what's the explanation for it? We're never given one. It's just like uh, Sanji's Diablo Jame. It's, it's like, not like, we know there's not a secret might... Ashura race that Zoro's a descendant of. <laughs> it might have some vague shit to do with Conquerors, but also it clearly can't just be Conquerors. Because Shanks is the Conqueror's god, and I don't think he can grow more limbs with his Conquerors. Yeah, I know. Right? It's, it's... And then with Diablo Jambe, I think people accepted it more because Sanji at least gave a reason. Whereas Zoro's just like, fuck you, I can grow limbs. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> and it's like, I don't care. It's cool. Yeah. One Piece is always... I think that's my thing with like bullshit power-ups that don't make sense. One Piece has always consistently had powers that characters can just kind of do so when it introduces more i'm like hell yeah <laughs> yeah also like i think it's kind of a shallow way to view a story it's like oh if it was built up beforehand therefore it's good but like i feel like all right that's cool and all if you can do that like i heard people saying oh dude odo evolved as a writer because he had like zero get enma like before the big battle at only gosh like that's not like evolution as a writer i don't think it's just like like obviously the ideas that the power comes with is going to be vastly more interesting to talk about right. and like sure you could talk about like you know like give them brownie points for building up ahead of time sure right. but like i i feel like to me it's just going to be brownie points in a story like one piece yeah where it's kind of just like it's fine it's yeah. fine power ups coming out nowhere it's fine i do i know very few cases where i dislike it yeah so why why don't any of the shots have hockey why don't they just get asshole power-ups and get a bunch of hockey dude come on okay well, I, it's I, ridiculous I, that the one the emperor cruise only has like four I, hockey um, users I or like, five 
I, I like both the lore reason and like the meta re and the meta reading. Or the cool meta reading is like it's fucking awesome that Luffy has easily the best supernova crew and is a fucking beast and is powering his way to be an emperor. And then not even half his crew can use hockey. That's fucking awesome. I you know the thing crew. is, I feel like the real meta reason just because like like. Nami getting armament or Officer Chaka would just be a lame power no, for her. It's, it's her getting thing. Zeus is way cooler. It yeah, is. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I mean, like the like the story wide of how cool it is, and then the lore reason is also hilarious. Of until Jinbei, we didn't have anyone who I think you could reliably ask to teach that. All right, like Luffy's a, a moron. I feel like Zoro would just be like, "Come on, you just you know grab the sword that's in your soul. <laughs> just grab the sword that's in your soul." And, and then on. and then Sanji's like, "I'm only teaching the women. Fuck you." <laughs> and then he's annoying with the women, so they don't learn anything. <laughs> and then like now that Jean Bay's here, it's like I guess one of them could ask Jean Bay, but also they would never ask because like Frankie is always tinkering with who fucking knows what. Luffy is half dead every arc, so Chopper has his hands full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine the only one that would take an active interest would be Usopp because he's because felt he it already. Unlocked it. And also, like, he just has that thing where, like, you know, like, I can't be a raw, powerful fighter, but if I can, like, get this observation down and be, like, a more useful sniper, I should do it. Whereas Frank would just be like, why the fuck do I need to punch hard with armament? I'll just build a better fist. <laughs> it's also kind of the thing of, like, the status quo, where it's like, the current status quo in One Piece is every Emperor's crew needs to have hockey. Everyone from the mooks to the top tiers. So when Luffy's crew breaks that status quo, instead of people saying, oh, cool, Luffy, Mr. Unconventional, isn't following the status quo, they say, yo what the fuck luffy's a fraud why isn't he following the status quo <laughs> why isn't he getting shanks to give them all lessons what the heck what's it's going like, on if they eventually get hockey that'd be neat but also like i don't know any straw hat where i'm like clearly hockey would improve them in a major way we're like obviously it could happen like i don't know maybe there's a way chopper could learn hockey that would be really cool chopper's probably the worst choice because he has a lot of interesting stuff going on i just fucking, i want i want full broke. i want full body arm and books because i think it would look cool <laughs> it looks so edgy it'd be so edgy it would no, it's like it's like fuck it could brook Brooks' powers don't seem to be going anywhere so maybe he'll get hockey so they will start going somewhere sure fuck it why not yeah Alright, uh, fuck, I have a stupid power scheme and stuff here where, like, oh, people are having confuzzled over whether Luffy's stronger than Kaido. Because, like, I feel like that's kind of just, like, an old thing where, like, people always had trouble scaling Luffy ever since, like, Gear 4, I think. And, I mean, I, I, I like, I like... And I love the reasons for it because, like, it's like, alright... I love the vagueness of One Piece top tiers where, like, where, like... No, I, I like the way Luffy interacts with the two, where it's like, at first you have, like, all these guys who are, like, kind of comparable in strength, who would win a 1v1 is always kind of questionable, we're not sure. And then Luffy shows up, and it's like, wow, you're a lot weaker than us. And Luffy's like, but for three minutes, I can beat you into the dirt. <laughs> yeah, no, like, that. that's the thing, like, uh, it's very old, like, ever, like when Luffy beat Dolphin Mingo, people were like, dude, if they restarted at full HP, both of them, like, Luffy wasn't running around just roast all day, fighting Shinja or whatever, and Dolphin Mingo didn't fight Law. Who would win, like, you know, fair, square, gladiatory style 1v1? And the answer is just like, well, I mean, Luffy can throttle him with Gear 4. Like, obviously, Gear 4 is way stronger than Dofi. The question is just, like, could he weaken can him Dofi enough? Can can he weaken him enough in base form to, like, you know, get to that point? And the answer and is why, iffy. And th that it's just iffy, and that's, and that's why, why it's been argued. And that's why one of the things Luffy developed in Whole Cake Island and Wano was... Uh, being able to like not instantly die in his base form. <laughs> yeah. Or like, and just like to, like dodge Katakuri in his base form. Being able to like box Kaido in his base form before being like, okay, we're good. I'm not dying. Now to go God mode. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's some funny things you can say with her. Like when Kaido said this is the best fight I've had in years when he fought Big Mom like two days ago. Mm -hmm. I think that's funny because then you could arguably like you could honestly if you wanted to be the edgy edgy like argument scaler man you could say well this proves that base Luffy is stronger than Big Mom. <laughs> Which is a very fun reading. <laughs> it is a fun reading. <laughs> Uh, you could you could try and take that home if you want, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, uh, do I have another like stupid power one? Uh, yeah. If you do, we may as well just get through all. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I have one more. Uh, 
end of series, how will Chu Luffy be? I always thought this was a dumb question. Oh, the, oh no, that's that's the status quo thing again. Of like, oh, up till now, all the top tier pirates have been in their forties and fifties. Luffy's super cool before he's even twenty. This is bullshit. We need a ten year time skip minimum. <laughs> I know. Just like, dude, what do you want? Do you want the world to like just sit still for ten years? Like, cause like we've seen how fast the One Piece world can change. If it's like ten years, which is a bigger gap than we've ever had, like every what happens what happens and also like i think it's kind of meaningful that luffy is very young like a because you know shown in magazine whatever that's like always youthful rebellion has been a big theme in one piece ever since like pretty much day one well and the whole uh uh younger generation thing yeah so like i feel like you you only stand to weaken that point by making luffy grow a beard and get a 10 year time skip Mm mm-hmm it's, it's just like, like sorry, it's just pe- it's just people having this weird hang up. Sit at the grown ups table because a bunch of people decided that because the admirals are forty, you're not allowed to fight them till you're at least thirty five. It's like running for president. There's a minimum age to become pirate. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I think it's kind of funny that like the hours. further. I think it's funny that the further we get into the story, the more it seems like a, a bunch of the top tiers were just like that good from like their twenties even downward. And then like kind of Kaido, just, like Kaido was suddenly. already like Kaido in like fifteen years old was already good enough to be one of Rox's front men. And then, um, like, obviously, he wasn't at everyone's level yet because he's like, ooh, Roger, and like five people immediately said, "Fuck off, we're fighting him." Kaido, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he's the, Kaido's not enough of a big dick to be like, no, he's mine. <laughs> he has to like, be like, okay, you can have him. Wait here um and no because that that kind of is and that makes sense because the whole thing is you get stronger by fighting everyone else but the emperors have kind of just been in like this stagnant reign like their yeah. whole reign like their whole rule and same with the war dude have you like, seen my age of daring and mighty video i'm pretty sure when you made that we helped you think it up oh <laughs> uh, you mean like my original blog yes oh, okay <laughs> that, that, that might be the case yeah <laughs> um and then the uh fuck what the fuck was i saying god damn it something about uh what the fuck was i saying oh yeah the whole uh stagnation thing and how yeah yeah the emperors and also even the warlords don't openly like the warlords literally aren't allowed to clash with each other and the emperors choose not to clash with each other so they all became top tiers back during like the chaotic era of like rocks and white and roger but now that they're gone they're kind of just sitting around as top tiers not like pushing themselves in any huge ways yeah like like, sure they prob- like 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 odin said kaido you should train and kaido probably did but like Kaido training against what, like some fucking trees? That ain't gonna do much for him. <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing. Like, how are any of them gonna become pirate king if they're like waiting twenty years to fight one of their rivals? Where like Luffy is gonna do it like as yeah, soon like, as he uh, can. Let's, let's say that when when the Emperor system started, uh, Kaido and Shanks fought as like just f- fought like rivals, the way uh, Roger fought Garp and Whitebeard. Kaido and Shanks would both actually be planetary by now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right I, this is another like end of series thing about the emperors is just like some people think there needs to be four more at the end and i i straight up like fi- from day one Ooh, thought I like the whole school. the whole yeah i thought like from day one uh or like end of series there's just gonna be one pirate king because the emperors from the beginning have been defined as like oh the, there's people there's those four emperors there, there's no one rule rule of the sea there's four emperors all fighting for the title so if there's a yeah. pirate king i don't think you can really be an emperor yeah, the whole, and you the can whole, be a yeah, really cool point, pirate, but you yeah, can't the be an emperor. Point is the emperors arose as the the stagnant rulers who were all within like grasp of becoming the thing that actually matters. Yeah, it's kind of like uh yeah, it's kind of like wow, all of the weird fucked up systems that Luffy had to overthrow aren't going to be here at the end of the series. I.e., emperors, the world nobles, and the warlords are all going to be gone. That's crazy. And Dude, can that, you believe uh, that the original four emperors was Roger, uh, Whitebeard, uh, uh, Shiki, and Redfield? No, I think Big Mom makes more sense than Redfield because she's old enough. Nah, uh, uh, she worked for Rox. Nah, uh, uh, nah, uh, uh, Rox. So Shiki. But Shiki uh, isn't. But Piki's in the PNG though. He's in that PNG that one guy so made. So is Whitebeard. So is Whitebeard. So is Big Mom. Uh, well, yeah, so, yeah. Is, so is uh, Kid and Law in that PNG. 
What fucking P? Oh, the PNG oh, where it's like oh, the parallel, the epic PNG. parallels. Okay, that could be I our next one. <laughs> I, I know that one. Okay, yeah, we can talk about this. Okay, so let's go in order. Luffy is the new Roger. Yeah. Yeah. He's obviously gonna do things that Roger didn't. Like one really cool one that I saw is you know how how Roger because he would sit was sick speed ran his final attempt and then said I was uh, too early. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Luffy is not speed running. He is going to every goddamn island ever, and maybe when he shows up, he still will technically be too early, but Luffy will be like, fuck that. I'm not too early. I'm going to bullshit my way through this, <laughs> which would be fire. And then, uh, uh, so yeah, but so Luffy is the new Roger, though. That's fair. And mm. then Law is the new Whitebeard. <laughs> Let's, no, let's the thing is similarities between all right. and white They're That's friends. Broken. They're friends with a uh, pirate king to be. Yeah, uh, and then they both have broken devil fruits that involve sphere shapes of unique colors. Now, what's the third? But what's not, like what's Whitebeard's defining trait? Uh, he loves his man. family. What's Law's defining trait? Uh, he He's has insane. low self worth. He oh. had low self worth and thought he that he should die uh, fighting for. The grudge against El Flamingo and Oh, that's junk. interesting. Yeah. Like like people have made this comparison, but it's like if you actually had to like gun to your head force a new white beard, it would have to be caught occurring. <laughs> no, like if you gun to had to force a new white beard, it would be Luffy, because Luffy is actually the new no, white beard no, parallel. No but, no, but that's cheating. But like if Luffy is one, but Luffy's oh, taking you, over Wano and Fisherman no, Island, like inheriting Whitebeard's will. No, he literally is. But if he had to force one besides Luffy, it'd have to be Katakuri. Because he, one, small thing, they're the exact same height. And then two, <laughs> yeah, he, he's also a big family man. Although he his is a literal blood family, so it's different. And then mm. Kid is the new Shiki. This is literally just because they're both like assholes, but they're assholes in very different ways. And then they both lost limbs. <laughs> That's literally the reason. That's why, even though she, by the time Shiki lost his limbs, Roger was dead. <laughs> and also now, like, it's not Shiki anymore. It's rocks now that people have to work with because oh, Shiki he, doesn't wait, matter as much kid. as people want. Wait, no, no. People don't say kid is rocks. People say no. teach is rocks. Yeah. And to be fair, this, this is just like old is, stuff. No, but teach is rocks is also like a fair one. Same yeah. of Zevic. Yeah. Like, you know. Beehive. Teach yeah. Pe teach is also intentionally. But dude, we, who's the new Redfield? Who's the new Redfield? Okay, no. Fuck Who's the new Redfield? Is it Bonnie? No, no, I bet it's Bonnie. No, Puff, he, no, Puff, think about it. No, dude, dude, think about no, it. Puff. Who's the new Bay Think Bay about it. Redfield Puff, wanted the Puff, vampire Puff. fruit because he wanted Puff, youth again. Puff, Bonnie Puff, has an age manipulating devil fruit. Puff, Puff, no one Coincidence? No one I think Redfield. not. <laughs> no one cares about Redfield. Half the people listening probably don't even know who Redfield is. But hey, that's <laughs> just a theory. <laughs> Okay, okay, no. So like, let's do like actual. We need a new four emperors, right? Yeah. Luffy is the new Shanks, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Buggy replace what? Fucking who did Buggy replace? Big Mom. Yeah, because they're both clowns. Yeah, yeah, sure. And and like they had big crews Polka dots. based around. They had big crews based around allies. Who's gonna be the okay? And then Blackbeard is the new Whitebeard, but like evil Whitebeard, right? Yeah. Is, who's uh i know so who the new kaido is i know who the new let's kaido. say like shanks dies and we get a new kaido right who's the new kaido your rogue rouge rouge because he was in that one scene with kaido and he's oh a big God, bulky that's man so true or it's just like guys fucking think about it why the fuck would we still have emperors after pirate king emperors inherently meant that the new world was not free and luffy is supposed to be the freest man ever who like signals a change in the world you think we're just going to keep our same shitty new world system fuck no i know just yeah, right. just well, let just right. let things change please we lost the yeah. warlords already the rest is going to come down sooner or later yeah that's the point all right what's next uh next is uh fake mysteries okay so we already touched on this with emerald city being an infamous one yeah what are so uh, i think i think another thing with fake mysteries is just like People making up a problem. Like, here's a made-up problem. Why does Chopper's human form not look like a human? Or why does Luffy, despite being a mythical zone, not have zone forms? It's like, shut the fuck up. It's not a real mystery. Because the story never presented it as one. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, the real reason why uh, Chopper looks like a gorilla is because he has fur. He's a reindeer. 
Uh, so when he transforms, he keeps his hair the same way Lucci, when he becomes like his hybrid form, or even his full leopard form, still keeps his that long is, black that hair. That's a fun head cannon. That's a fun head cannon. Yeah, like, like like you just keep your hair like Jabra, like in his uh, or like even Kaku, like still had red hair in his draft form, right under his yeah. hat. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then my my head cannon for the whole uh, Luffy mythical zone thing is Luffy because he's made a <laughs> Ulti's fucking hair in her dinosaur form. Holy shit! Really or page one. one. Uh, and Puff, my my head cannon with Luffy and oh, why doesn't he have zone forms? Is I don't like the gay. Uh, dumb little not gay is not derogatory i'm sorry i've been arguing with a bad person lately and it don't call me like a bad person because he literally not you <laughs> the other one because he doesn't like when he gets called it no um uh the dumb uh the dumb one where gear four is supposed to be the hybrid i don't like that here's my s tier head cannon no gear four Luffy? is supposed to be the full transformation no 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 that's gear five you moron no gear five is the awakening no, gear, that no, was made no, very clear, Shiki. Come no, on, no, no, keep no, up. No, no, that, keep no, up. That's the point. No, be, no, the Nika fruit. No, here's here's my head cannon. The Nika fruit is very special, so you don't get the full form until you awaken because fuck you. And then Luffy is such a fucking idiot because here's the thing: Luffy's made of rubber, right? So he always has his devil fruit active. Luffy is such a fucking idiot that he's in hybrid form twenty four second and doesn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> That is my reading because it's awesome. <laughs> no, like here's my reading. Uh, is that like uh, Luffy as he is is just like you know, it's the same as Marco where like his healing will just kick in if he gets like hit in the head. It's, it's right. the same with Luffy. It's just always on. It's passive. Then gears two and three are his hybrid forms. The same way a Marco will just transform parts of his body. Like we haven't seen like a quote unquote hybrid form for Marco. Maybe he has one. Who knows? But it just seems like he transforms parts of his body into it. So it's like that's what Luffy's yeah. doing with like the the gear three with a big um, arm and, and uh and the other blood explanations with... are it's a mythical human human god fruit. We oh, I think know. this is fucking stupid that we have to do this to begin with, and why I wish Luffy stayed a Paramecia. <laughs> Oh, you fucking baby oh my god here's here's the actual reason who fucking cares if we don't learn it doesn't matter neek is a weird fruit objectively true if we do learn cool <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to see an sps graph where this is the hybrid this is the full form this is the awakening <laughs> I'd like if Oda. I do um, think Luke, Gear like Four makes Oda's sense for a full yeah. awakening because it is based on that like uh, Wisdom King uh, Kyo statue thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. What's next? Uh, next. Uh oh wait. Uh, here's another fake mystery. How did Zoro get his scar? <laughs> I fucking How love that. How did Zoro get his scar? I fucking love that because the reveal... did a demon hop in his eye? Mm -hmm. Is it the Sharon like... Gap? No, no, what's funny, Puff, is we've had evidence about what it really was for decades, but people never brought it up until Wano, because now we know that Zoro doesn't have any hidden powers. And now they can tell the truth, which is Oda has had concept art of Oda, of Zoro with a scar since the beginning of One Piece. He Oda just likes Zoro with a scar, so when he got to update his design... He gave him an eye scar because it looks cool. And it's like, how did Zoro get it? Zoro was doing swordsmanship training for two years. And also, he has like 5,000 scars on his body. There's a million ways it could have happened. Could have happened from Mihawk. Could have happened from a baboon. Could have happened from Perona. She, he pissed her off and she threw a knife at him. <laughs> he could have done it to himself. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, Mihawk, this chose sword me. When I this sword chose me when I threw it in the air, it spun and it didn't hit my arm. Watch this. Then he does that and it scratches his eye and he's like, <laughs> You little shit <laughs> It doesn't always listen to me. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh here's one that I care about a lot. Uh your favorite arc doesn't matter, your reasoning does. Oh, this is kind of just This like is just this is just people saying like, ah, oh, oh, Whole Cake Island's in your top three? Yuck. Uh, objectively bad opinion. Is this you being defensive because you put your art ranking and a lot of people judged you in the comments? Uh, I think <laughs> only like one guy. I don't think. Oh, I thought I two did. Okay. Maybe two. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, no, it's just no, that, like, no, all right. No. I feel like it's just like such dumb conversation. People are like, dude, like, uh, dress Rosa though. Can you respect someone putting dress Rosa in their top five? And like, yeah. I don't give a shit I can, I can where they put. You. I don't give a shit where they put dress Rosa in their list. It could be dead bottom well, for actually, all I care. Well, actually, Puff, let me clarify. 
Uh, there is exactly one arc where I'll judge you, and that's Reverie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's yeah, that's one. Yeah, arc. if you it's pick one arc. that's not an arc, then I will judge you. But otherwise, yeah. I don't care where you put it. But like, what you have to say about the arc, like why you dislike well, that, it or like it, like I care about a lot more. To media in general. No, like, it definitely uh, does. Like, like here, here's an example. Uh, I'll do a one to one. Having Marine Ford is your favorite arc, but your reasons are just it was so hype, Ace dying was sad, and the stakes were big. It's kind of like if your favorite manga is Berserk, and your reasons are it's really sad and mature. <laughs> you know, like I feel Whereas, like it's more like a uh, better way to think about it. I love One Piece for you know the reasons I mean, why I love One Piece, I and then the and then there's ten bajillion dumb One Piece fans who also have it as their favorite manga. We're not the same. No, 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 Puff, I was about to get to that. Yeah. But, so, like, Marineford is your favorite for normie reasons. Is like, having Berserk is your favorite manga because you want to seem smart. Yeah. Whereas, like, let's say I know, like, let's say I know someone whose favorite arc is, like, fucking... I used to know someone whose favorite arc was Jaya. Yeah. Because they thought the structure of Jaya and the comedy with Jaya was S-tier. And they actually talked a lot about how cool Jaya was. I think they are infinitely smarter and more respectable than the marine ford guy even though if we were going to be objective i agree with the marine ford guys ranking more because i do yeah, and then no, the comparison to that would be like if that's the berserk liker then this guy's favorite manga is fucking horiko <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's mean that seems mean okay like, uh, yeah mean it's kind of like all right is, Hun this. is hunter hunter your favorite uh manga because like you love the characters and like you know the plot or whatever well, or do you love you it because you think it's a deconstruction movie. of the shonen genre because it's not that if you think it's that then you're an idiot i know well, it's kind of just like it's kind of just this whole thing of like it's okay to not think that hard that's okay but if you're gonna actively talk about media a lot and talk about rankings and analysis a lot be more critical challenge yourself to like actually think about what is this arc trying to say what does this arc do well what does it not do well like for example one of my favorite new uh you i don't know if they're new new to me youtubers is uh the guy who does um one piece uh manga layout analysis because i've never seen yeah that dude that the waddle d layout. guy i showed you that guy yeah what's his fucking name Vicar and be an asshole if you don't say his name Dude, we should plug him in. He deserves more subs. You yeah. should get to a thousand. What is the name of the description, please? I think he might be bigger than us. Hold he on. definitely is bigger than us, which is funny as fuck. Not bigger than my main channel, though. Oh, yeah, I... but he's... Uh, uh, okay. uh, what's his fuck? Uh, uh, Werb. W-E-R-B. Yeah, I'll put a link to in the bottom uh, of the You guys video. should watch Werb. He's interest... He actually does interesting analysis. Yeah, and, like, if I ever had to, like... Like, I I've talked about how I don't like weekly reviews and stuff, but, like, if yeah. I had to, I would pick this guy's. Just because he yeah. does it, like, in a way that, like... I'm not like fully. I'm not fully equipped to talk about paneling, so it's nice that there's someone that will it's just do that. I don't see very often, which is cool. Yeah. All right. Next. Uh, next is uh. Okay, this is like related to the last thing. Oda's lifespan was wasted on Skypea. Okay. Because this, this is like the dumbest comment I've ever seen from anyone yeah, ever. Yeah, and it was. It's just disgusting. No, so back when back in our cringe blogger days, so this was act. I love that you hold beef from this when this is probably like four or five years old. I know it's just like this it's was the ancient. dumb. No, like well, basically, this was this was back before 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 the Nika shit. Skypea hate was still like the shit. Where it's like it's the filler arc, it's cringe, blah blah blah. That was still the thing because people hadn't decided. It foreshadowed Nika by having a somewhat silver silhouette. Where because or now the days uh, back then it was like Skypea is filler and gay and a waste of time. I said gay is derogatory again. I'm so sorry. I was I've been arguing with this friend way too often. No, um, where Skypea sucks ass and is filler and is boring and I hate it. And uh, it reached the point where some people would just outright say unhinged things like Oda it has a limited lifespan. He shouldn't waste it writing mid filler like Skypea. Uh, I know. It's just like, all right. So you're saying that like if there was a new, like, we got a new crewman and it, it would be perfectly fine. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but like, dude, a, that's a disgusting excuse. It's Oda's life. He can do whatever he, the hell he wants with it. 
B, you don't even know if you're going to like the final saga. You don't. Yeah. It could be no, terrible. And then, uh, and it's then, possible think, that it's just I bad at the end. we can use this to talk about a more general thing of, like, the people who say that, like, less is more in all stories all the time. Oh, that's, now, like, One Piece is, like, the last story you should yeah, apply that yeah, to. Yeah, no, I like how big, I like One Piece because it's big as fuck. Like, people are, like, like, people will read Wano and be like, why do we have these, why do we have the numbers and the Yakuza boys who work under Kyo? They don't do anything except look kind of cool and get beat up. And it's like, you people say that, and yet you don't bitch about, like, I don't know, fucking, uh the uh ki kiwi what what the ki kiwi and her sister fighting the sh the shadow men who turn out to be big executioners with balls on chains during eddie's lobby you don't complain about that and those were even more nothing yeah, and i think it, i think it's just like recency bias where they no, they yeah. where people don't realize that one piece has always been like this and that's why i like it yeah i like that like when we meet foxy's crew they show off all of his cool badass members like the straw hats might be recruiting one <laughs> i think that's fucking great i love that i still remember the name of most of foxy's front runners like you got foxy you got his boy hamburg you got best girl porsche you got fucking pickles you got what's what's the big guy big pan you got our boy big, big pan. pan and then i don't remember the fish man's name i'm sorry <laughs> hamburg no, 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 the fish no. man, uh, the guy with the long nose. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know it. I don't remember his name. I'm very sorry. It's like, I love that One Piece is like that. And the thing is, like, if you're only going to start applying the, oh, there's too much stuff criticism now, it is it is reasonably bad. It's like, guys, One Piece has always been like this. Either go arc by arc and bitch about every little character you think should be cut. Talk about how Richie was unnecessary and Moji doesn't fucking matter and fucking Choo Choo. Yeah, go to Orange Town. Yeah, make it the live oh, action. Oh, God. No, just... like that. I was about to bring up that point where it's just like, dude, I think like the trade off was like 50 50. Like, I think like Morge said that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And just like, all right, if you like immediately think that like shorter equal better, I can. I see why you would think that, but also but I think that's the one piece, dumbest. One piece it's so but dumb. Two long memes. You came into One Piece knowing it was gonna be long as fuck, and that's the thing of like, if you're the type of person who doesn't like stories that have like Choo Choo and Richie and Moji instead of only Buggy and Kabaji, or you're the type of person who would have liked if Marine Ford didn't name drop a fuck ton of Whitebeard allies who will never matter. That's fine, but don't only start saying Oda should change now when this is how the story has only always been, and this is clearly in the spirit of the work. Yeah, like like the thing is like you could there are hundreds thousands of manga even they're just like a volume or two long and you can go yeah, and read them if read you want Kagurabachi, you fucker. like that's I'm the thing guys book. we have thousands of manga to, to look at like you can just mm -hmm. if you like short stories there's tons of short yeah. stories mm -hmm. if you like only if you... want like three characters who matter and like go super in-depth on three characters then have the work end with that just those three characters being important there's plenty of that there's so yeah. much of that if you yeah, if you want a shorter story with really heavily focused characters, uh, go read Soul Eater. It's my second favorite manga. <laughs> no, like I'm thinking like even shorter. Like I think no, like no, maybe yeah. even... Soul Eater's twenty five volumes. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Or like go even read... just like or even like just like I don't know like a Junji Ito if that's really like one yeah, volume it's... horror manga. Yeah. He has like a, a hundred of those. It's like basically if you hate long series, don't come in here to what is clearly a series where people like that it's long and why it's long is a huge part of why it's successful and loved. And don't say, here's how we fix this by completely changing it. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, did you remember that like, ble do you remember that like, bleachery right? Where it's like, I'm going to yeah. cut the whole 13 court card squad. Oh yeah. No, they didn't get to that yet, but they cut, I think Chad. <laughs> or they almost cut him or something. No, I don't. Or like, no, they want to turn like they want to turn Ichigo's like sisters into one character. I'm like, but why though? You don't oh, yeah, get they, no, they you don't gonna, get a super no, no, character by no, no, combining no, two characters fuse, who exist. They were gonna fuse both of Ichigo's sisters and Tatsuki into one character, and Orihime's best friend was gonna be like some twelve year old. I know it's just like you know, no, where it's kind of just like guys, it's okay if you like shorter stories, but just read shorter stories don't look at one piece's length and think all right i'm gonna read this and god forbid if it has a lot of stuff going on i'm gonna be so mad <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, it'd be like if you read like if you went into uh 
a, a super long four coma slice of life and you're like this better not have snappy stupid jokes and not a lot of character writing and then and then be baffled when when that happens it's like you knew what you were in for uh, you know what was my introduction to Arya? like the first time it, the manga came to my attention what it was a tweet that said when do the Arya serious chapters start and people That's were like what funny, excuse me <laughs> Arya serious chapters what what were you expecting dude it's cute, cute girls on gondolas like it's it's it, chapter one is about as serious as it gets <laughs> That's cute. i love that i know good series right, go read uh, it go watch my next? video on it. it has like 300 views and what's next uh next uh all right there's a lot that we could talk about but i guess we should wind down soon so let's just talk about this one because we talked about it earlier. Uh, Dolphamingo was born evil. Hi, best guy. Ever. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing that a lot of people seem to think. Dolphamingo, or like, either A, Dolphamingo, the story says Dolphamingo was born at evil. Look sexy ass or silhouette. B, look at the subtle Corazon, sexuality Oh my! Not Corazon. Rojinate thinks Dolphy was born evil. He did. Where it's kind of like, people are dumb. Where it's like, Dolphy's character is very clear he at a young age had a lot of fucked up ideals because he was a celestial dragon and then on top of those he then got uh, crucified which uh, just pissed him the fuck off and while he's being crucified we actually saw one of his eyes so like yeah oh that, that, that's the thing like yeah we saw doflamingo's yeah, eyes in case you guys were wondering cool. what Dofi's eyes look like they're normal eyes we see one you're fine you, you could make a theory that he only has one eye that'd be fun like he lost one when he was getting uh uh, crucified? Fuck it. That's a cool theory. Um, uh, and then we see that uh, Rojinate, at first, back when he was a dick... Uh, Hold on, my dog's like, barking a shit. Alright, I shall wait. I am waiting. Ready to talk about Rojinate and how he's an interesting character and not just a ha-ha Fuck, I have to go look at him. Shot in the face. I'm gonna keep talking. Fuck you. People are like, oh, Rojinate is so cool. I love Rojinate. Remember when he got his ass beat by Vergo sporting the most dork-ass bowl cut? That's your that's your guy? Shut up. Vergo is so much cooler than Rojinate. He, Rojinate deserves to die and give his position to Vergo. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That, that, that's my Vergo headcanon. He was so happy to beat the shit out of Rojanate and Law, not just because he doesn't like them, but because he wants their seat. He's pissed. <laughs> he's pissed that he doesn't get to have the heart seat. It's not fair. <laughs> he's he's do Back when he and Dofi were growing up, they were the closest in age. They were such bros. Like, not really, because Vergo doesn't talk. But he could pretend they were bros. And then these, these assholes, first his brother, and then this kid with the immortal fruit taking his place. That's fucked up. I don't know how Puff still isn't back yet. I'm just kind of rambling. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, also, Vergo is just like a king. I, yo, Punk Hazard is so underrated. All of its villains are so iconic. Monet has a 10 out of 10 design with her goofy little goggles and the fact that she's a bird. Also, Monet doesn't have bird legs. She only has little uh, bird parts from the shin down. The anime fucked that up. Fun fact for you. Uh, and then Monet is also just like a hot bird lady. And then Vergo is like a badass with a really funny gimmick of food on his face. And then Caesar is fucking immaculate. I love him so much. He's such an awesome little war criminal. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Shiki, as I was calming my dog down, I remembered Anthropology Boy from uh, Danganronpa. Don't say anything spoilery. About yeah, no, I won't. And I just and it just got me thinking, like, all right. Uh, oh, right. About this whole, like, you know, arc ranking shit, whatever. Uh, objectively good way to tell stories which is a what a ton of analysis is which is just stupid mm -hmm. like actual anthropologists and like people who study media don't give a shit about that at yeah, all obviously. they vouch I'm like what does it say about the society it was made or about the right or about the writer or about like you know oh, yeah, no, why people like it or or uh, like like interesting analysis is not the quality of the work and like scaling it with you know, everything like, else like, uh, like one of the most interesting things about reading old stories like i was reading some cliff notes on the original one of the original rapunzels we don't know what the original is that's why it's cool um and it was just small symbolism things like hey guys did you know that in the original story the uh the tower that she's stuck in is supposed to be shaped like a penis because the mom is scared of her learning about how hot men are that's real. And she that's can't look at amazing. the. She can't look at it from the outside. She has to yeah, stay yeah, inside. Yeah, you know, it's, it's baller. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so back back to what I was saying about Law and Rojinate and all that shit. Okay, mm. so when Rojinate is introduced, he does think Dofi was born evil, but then he meets 
uh, Law, who at first he only cares about because he's part of the D clan, but then as he grows with Law and meets him, he's like, oh my god, this kid is just like my brother, and this kid is not born evil. He is just in the worst place ever because society has decided he doesn't get to have a good life. And mm. then from that, we see that Korra no longer thinks his brother is born evil. And then we see that because if you guys remember when Korra died, he had a gun trained on Dofi and he never shot. He never shot Dofi. Yeah. Like if he really thought this guy is pure evil down to his core, like why wouldn't he shoot? Whereas, like, I guess maybe, like, best, like, most generous way you can be is, like, oh, he's like Rebecca and Riku, where he's such a pacifist. But we know that's not true, because he threw a fucking grenade at the barrel pirates. Like, And he burned down so many hospitals. (laughs) uh, Yeah, he did. Like, he's not, like, a morally upstanding person. No, it was, like, at the very end, he, he, like, obviously, Dofi's still evil, but he realized his brother was still a person and wasn't born evil. And probably, one, because it's his brother who went through the same shit as him, and two, because he sees Law and Dofi as so similar, he couldn't bring himself to shoot him. Yeah, this and is a, like, the, the thing I'm making in my view. Like, like uh, Bla, uh, uh, Doflamingo and Roshanante. I stealing your talking points because yeah. I'm just uh, so yeah. smart. Yeah, Roshanante and Doflamingo both compare him to, like, a young Doflamingo multiple times. They make that so very clear in the arc. Mm-hmm. So, like, if he, yeah. care, if he cares about this little boy who is just like Doflamingo was when he was a boy, mm-hmm. why would he also not care about Dofi? It's kind of a contradiction in his character. Oh, wait, Maybe you, you know what I just realized about the Dofi born evil thing? What? So Best Guy Ever is smart enough to know that Orochi, that the story was not saying Orochi was born evil. You're an idiot if you think that and look at the story. But he is dumb enough to think that about Dofi when it's the exact same thing. I think it's, it's it comes from this place like, oh, uh, Roshnat is like the hero look or like the bell mare where they're just supposed to be this moral center of the flashback. And you're supposed to love, and, and, and like you're like supposed he... to, and you're supposed to love like everything they do. And like, they don't, they don't have any character flaws even at all. Even though they're all, even though like all of the all three of them are, do <laughs> no all parent figures are imperfect here look turn someone into a frog that's a thing he did yeah or like bell yeah. hit nami that one time you yeah, know like, like that was a big thing with here look that people forget he wasn't a good doctor he was the single worst doctor the island has ever had yeah like the, he was the quack yeah no like literally we've never seen any medicine he make actually work besides the sakura blossoms the rest <laughs> fucking garbage <laughs> <laughs> the soccer boss wasn't even medicine it was just literally meant to be like this beautiful no, scene to lift people's listen, hearts because here look is a therapist at heart okay yeah medicine he is for the mind the yeah king. antidepressants don't exist in one piece okay so you need to have a fireworks show got it <laughs> yeah. all right uh and then uh here's another thing is like dude how was dolph flamingo so strong why was he so strong? We're just dude, it's just, this is, now. dude, it's just like fairy tale, dude, come on. <laughs> I like fairy tale. I'm gonna reread fairy tale. When I finish the rules five, said that Doflamingo was supposed to be a puppeteer who was very weak and cowardly and hid in the shadows. <laughs> oh no, here, we can start hyping up our next video. When I, when I finish finals... And I go back and I get access to my fairy tale volumes because I own the whole series. I'm gonna fucking reread it and fuck it. I'll take notes for once, which I don't do, because then we can drop an evil fuck fairy tale video. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Do, like, yeah, Tito. yeah, like we have the tier list, but like, you know, the only like the second half of it is good. I think. Oh, that tier list is fucking garbage. Please don't watch it. Yeah, Please. don't watch my it. My memory during it. First of all, I'm pretty sure one, I was half asleep. Two, my memory was garbage. Three, I wasn't done rereading. So half the shit we say is wrong. It's a terrible tier list. Also, we picked a bad list because it didn't include like any Edelus characters. Yeah, so like I was thinking maybe next time we do like good fairy tale pins where we would just talk about cool aspects or characters in the story. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have anything you want to talk about fairy tale, good or bad, send it our way. Yeah. Please. Oh okay. Yeah, no. Oh, I, I wonder if that's weird. People who hate seven deadly sins but like fairy tale. <laughs> oh goodness. I think compared. that's I think that there's probably someone out there like that. I think that I mean, might be us. Oh wait no, I know who that is. That's King of Lightning. Oh well, no, King of Lightning's the opposite. No, yeah, sorry, I got mixed up. Yeah, he's the opposite where he likes seven deadly sins but uh d- hates a uh, fairy tale. A garbage opinion. Yeah, I know. Okay, so anyway, about the whole Doflamingo uh not supposed to be strong thing, like A, mm-hmm. One Piece villains are supposed to be strong. 
Like, yeah, like, like they make it quite clear if a villain is supposed to be a chump, i.e., Wapple, Foxy, Orochi. You know, the second you meet them, oh, this guy's, this guy's our spandom. The second you meet them, you're like, oh, this guy's a pushover. <laughs> yeah, like, or even like someone like Moria, who was like, oh, he's lazy. He's like, you know, literally a puppeteer. Like, he controls zombies and hides in the shadows and runs away from fights. Even he can punch an island in half. Oh, no, Mori is honestly kind of an inverse where he looks like a chump, but then people are like, dude, it, uh, any of the monster trio could have beat Moria. Where it's like, no, he couldn't. Moria hit you with the... Okay, because here's the thing. Moria's plan to beat Luffy, if you guys don't remember, is Moria has a technique called Bat Box, which is so fast that Gear 2 Luffy got trapped inside of it. And then Moria, with his island-splitting punches, beat the shit out of the box. But Luffy lived because he's made of rubber. That would have killed Sanji and No, Zora. it would have killed... Zoro would lose against Moria. I'm sorry, guys. It's true. You know, it's funny. Okay, so anyway, yeah. One Piece villains are supposed to be strong. That's normal. And then two... Like, Doflamingo was just built up to be like really a really strong guy because like a like uh, the fact that he's being late for later in the story is already a sign. Yeah. B or like uh, his as best guy ever showed us Dofi's first like big fighting feat because like his first technical feat is like controlling fucking Sarkis and who cares but his first actual fighting feat is immediately slicing off little Ors' junior's leg which is a big deal because if you guys remember we were fighting Ors Ors a couple arcs ago. And we had to concoct the dumbest plan in the yeah, world. Yeah, dude, like, literally, like, like, literally, the whole Strats have to work together, like, a teamwork at the maximum, pulling off way more maneuvers than they ever had before, just to beat, like, a, like, the zombie of Ors with, like, a fake arm and all that, and they had to abuse the fact that he had a fake arm. And then, and then there's a real Dolph live one, and Doflamingo just and annihilates it immediately, so like it's like, it, oh. Like, like and we can even do the whole not-named attack thing. We didn't even know what he did. He just just like, hey, your foot's gone now. And it's like, holy shit. Because, like, Zoro didn't cut off his foot. Zoro didn't know how. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of like looking at, like, say, Luffy after the task of after he one shot a pacifist and be like, oh, so it's like, he's supposed to be a puppeteer because he, <laughs> he one no, shot a really no, no, strong no, thing. No, no, no. It's like saying, no, it's like saying Luffy is supposed to be, like, um, a dodger because or like 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 an evasion type guy who goes for critical hits because he dodged the lightning attacks not the lightning the laser attacks and then just went for one really good hit <laughs> it's like dofi is a manipulator and a brawler because dofi has layers and they go together because dofi's manipulation is again based in hatred and then dofi's uh and then dofi as a fighter just like when he goes awakening mode is just letting his wrath out yeah and uh like is it like i get like you know birdcage like and how it's like oh that is stupidly strong so i kind of get why that would irk you but like all it should do like at worst it should just irk you it shouldn't be this huge plot hole or this huge problem with the story or whatever no like i I admit the birdcage is kind of fucking stupid but i fuck with that I fuck with the fact that Dofi has one attack that an admiral just, just can't cut through. No, dude, he didn't, he wanted the pirates to be the heroes. That's why he didn't try. There's in-universe no, reasons for no. it. I, I greatly prefer the idea that Fujitora was just like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, this is a strong fucking oh, string. Also, it should be that Gear 4 should be able to break it because he can, uh, can't just break the strings. Like, he does it with the Awakened strings and the Parasite strings. So, like, right, he should right. do it with Brickage 2. So it's even then, like, it's not even, like, that stupidly strong. Luffy was just the one guy who was strong enough who tried. Like, I, I'm sure I'm sure if, like, Sabu Fujitora decided, I want to break the strings, they probably could have. So anyway, yeah, Doflamingo was strong because he's an anime villain, and those tend to be pretty strong. Shocking. Yeah, so I guess uh, that's it for now. Uh, I We have a lot more to get to, but we can save that for another day. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go yeah. do things. Very fun. Uh, hi everyone, uh, Shiki Mocha. Please don't talk for the next ten seconds. Uh, so we're gonna get some suggestions this time. We'll get to it later. Later date. Can't believe none of you talked. Why didn't you resist the temptation? You told us not to. <laughs> you got you recorded now, sucker. <laughs>